Is Linux Mint 22.2 Zara the second best distribution or the most visited on DistroWatch? Let's find out by downloading the ISO image from its official website. Linux Mint is an operating system for desktops and laptops. It is designed to work out of the box and comes equipped with the most essential applications for daily use. Finally, after booting the live session, we noticed that it didn't recognize the Wi-Fi adapter, which is recognized by most Ubuntu-based distributions. We will continue the installation without network access. We select the desired language, configure the keyboard layout, and it asks if we want to install multimedia codecs. Next, it prompts us for the type of disk partitioning. I selected to erase the disk and carefully choose the correct disk. Then we set the location. Now, we enter the username, hostname, user, password, and indicate that we want to log in automatically. Now, we wait for the installation to complete. Linux Mint started in 2006 based on Kubuntu and KDE. The latest versions of Linux Mint have been based on Ubuntu and use Cinnamon as the default desktop environment. Once the installation is finished, we restart the computer and Linux Mint will load for the first time. Upon booting, we see the Cinnamon desktop with a black background and its logo. Despite the long installation time, at least it recognized the Wi-Fi adapter. We select the network and enter the password to access the internet. Now, we review the desktop, which is Cinnamon with a dark theme. It has most of the applications from the desktop versions, with a set of different icons. We open the terminal, enlarge the font, and proceed to update the system, mainly to ensure it recognizes the mirror server and can install packages. We install the NeoFetch package to gather system information and Sysbench to benchmark the distribution using the same computer we've used in other videos. We run NeoFetch, which provides information about the kernel, desktop environment, window manager, and initial memory usage. The only thing missing is the disk installation. We use commands to obtain the distribution name, kernel version, memory, and disk usage, and compare those results with those from NeoFetch. Then, we run the Y2038 bug test and execute the systemdeanalyze command to get the system's boot time, excluding the time taken by the firmware. Next, we use Sysbench for evaluation, starting with the CPU, observing the performance of a single thread and then five threads using mathematical operations. We continue with the thread and mutex test to analyze the processor's concurrent load management and the locking and efficiency of resources, respectively. We evaluate both memory read and write speeds, using a sequential benchmark to measure the system's ability to handle memory operations. Then, we prepare the necessary files to evaluate disk input and output, running the test to determine storage performance. We execute the top command to measure the memory consumed by Firefox with one window, without any active extensions, just to observe the initial resource consumption. We open a second tab and load a video, then a third tab, and finally a fourth, observing how memory consumption increases with each new tab. We have finished reviewing and evaluating Linux Mint 22.2. Now, we will analyze the results we observed and measured during the tests and observations. Linux Mint uses the Ubuntu kernel version. It installed Windows 8 and 83 packages. It uses the latest versions of Cinnamon as the desktop environment and Mutter Muffin as the window manager. The initial memory usage was 1.02 GB, an average value. As for disk installation, it used 10 GB which is a lot of space. Linux Mint does support the Y2038 bug, and the boot time without firmware was 82 seconds, which is too long compared to other distributions. In the CPU tests with Sysbench, it achieved over 1,080 events per second, a very impressive result for the tested computer. But the thread test was average. The thread test was poor, with only 1,324 events per second. Meanwhile, the Mutex test achieved 11 events per second, which is a very impressive result. In memory read and write tests, the values were also average, indicating that there is no efficient memory access management in this distribution. Among the different Firefox tabs, it consumed an average of 391 megabytes per tab, an average value compared to other distributions, with no remarkable results. As for disk read and write speeds, with 10 megabytes per second for reading and nearly 7 for writing, these are average values among the evaluations made. 
In conclusion, compared to the benchmark of 18 Debian and Ubuntu-based distributions, Linux Mint ranks 12th, far from its position on DistroWatch. That's all for now. We will continue testing other distributions. If you like the video, give it a like, comment, subscribe, and activate the notification bell. See you next time.